could go into um, the words database and show you where you find those projections. Okay, so let me move on to the words database. Okay. So. Okay, so I log in. So you all created the account. Hopefully, so let's log in. Okay. Um, you know, for the return calculation, uh, around the announcement date, we used Compostart, capital IQ. Um, regarding any analyst forecast, you'll find information on the so-called IBES database. So this is the link here. So if we click on IBES, it's a <clears throat> database, I think, also by Thomson Reuters. Yeah, it's um, maintained by, by Thomson Reuters. Um, what we find here is um, a gathering of all the information of the large brokerage houses and the individual analysts. Um, so you find information of you know how you know by how many analysts the respective companies are followed uh, and what those uh, forecasts of the analysts are. So we need to distinguish between an individual analyst and so to speak the analysts in aggregate. Um, of course, we kind of like it makes more sense for our task to just look at the projections of the analysts in aggregate so to look at kind of like the whole sum um, so you'll find that under summary uh, summary history so if you click on that summary history and then summary statistics um, this is a database um, where where um, where all the analyst forecasts are combined together okay and then um, the output is just the median forecast. Okay, median forecast means just the, just the forecast in the middle. So not the very good forecast for the company, not the very bad forecast in the company, but just the forecast in the middle. Okay, so if we have, if we have nine analysts following a company, then, um, then this database just looks at the forecast of analysts Number five, you would sort it, for example, on, on you know, um, on on um, on the value of, for example, an earnings per share forecast. Okay. Um, so how do we download data from here? Um, so again, I would like to use uh, Linde as an example. Um, uh, so. The first one is we can choose between IBA statistical period, so when they gathered the information together versus the forecast period then I would just stick with IBA statistical period. And the second one, what the second thing that we need to do is to look at the data range. So um, I would maybe download uh, two or three years around your merger just to make sure that you don't miss anything. So um, the merger I've looked at with Linde is the, is the merger with, um, with PixEra, which occurred in 2017. So uh, what I would like to do is then I would download data from beginning of 2016 to maybe the end of 2000, um, 2018. December 18, um, the official ticker of Linde is, is LEN, okay, um, it's in the international file, and now we need to specify the measures that we're interested in. Um, so, for, for example, for residual earnings calculation or discounted cash flow calculation, we need uh, the earnings per share that's already in here, we need the book value per share forecast, we need the, maybe the cash flow per share um, forecast um, and the dividend per share forecast. Okay, <laughs> so these are kind of like the four measures that we need. Uh, we don't know the others, so there there are there are some more return on equity forecasts and so on and so forth. But uh, I think it's enough to download just those four um, forecasts and then. Um, we kind of like we see the time horizon of the forecast. So uh, fiscal year one would just download 
um, the forecast up to one year. Okay, fiscal year two would download the data of up to two years. Uh, so we can use uh, fiscal year one, two, three, four, and five. So all of this five years. And what we also be interested in is the long-term growth rate. So what are the what are the analysts assuming for the long-term growth rate of the company? Um, um, in addition to that, there are yeah additional information like the official ticker, the company name, um, the, the number of estimates of how many analysts um, did did forecast for the company, um, the median estimate. This is um, pretty important standard deviation, currency code, might be different currency maybe, and. Um, yeah, maybe periodicity. So, um, how much in the future are they forecasting? Okay, I'm going to use a CSV file, non zipped. I'm going to hit submit query. So, the query runs. So, this might, this might take a little while. Um, so, but this is how you, how you could download all of the data for your particular companies and then build your own small Excel based valuation model following. Um, the scheme that I've just presented to you. Um, do you have any questions on the download or on on anything so far while this download is processed? Anything? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, you can hear. Me. Last you a thing about the, the download of this kind of data. For what the concern they uh, report? Do we have to use them specifically for uh, which part of the report? Uh, um, so, so just for the part of, 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 of analyzing the share price premium, right? So after you've discussed the history, then the prior performance to the deal, then the strategic arguments, the strategic fit and the savings and the purchase price allocation, then we're down to the price premium. So kind of like to the goodwill, how much is the goodwill resulting from the company? And then you could call it um, kind of like the um, analysis of the of the price premium and here you could build in um, uh, either a multiple based valuation model dcf based valuation model or residual earnings valuation model you don't have to do all of the three but just choose whatever you feel more comfortable and then discuss a little bit on what you think whether it's reasonable to pay such a high price premium or not okay often it's i mean it's totally fine if you say doesn't make any sense that they have paid so much as a price premium, there is no way. If you look at the projections of the, of the, of the like of the analysts, there is no way that they are able to generate this value for the shareholders and even beyond that in the future. So it's totally fine to do that. You just need something to back up your your like your arguments, and this is why you should use one of those free approaches. So we use, so we use the WRDS database just for the. Premium part too. Yeah, just I think you just need it for the premium part. You just because this is this um this IBIS, so um it's it's um, international brokers estimate system or something. That's just kind of like the abbreviation for that. Um, what 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 you can find there is just the just the forecasts of of earnings per shares, book value per shares, cash flow per shares, and dividends per share. So it's something. It's a database used for valuation purposes. Okay, you don't find and, and you don't I, find merger reports in detail there or something like that. Okay. Okay. Sorry, just, Sorry, just another yeah. question. In point two of the point that you provided us, you say the outline of the historical performance, well as the current sales and profit mix uh, by region, segment, distribution channel. Yeah. Here are you mean of the of the merger of the single companies? Uh, so kind of like before and then of potential how how it will look like together. Um, so what I've also uploaded to Blackboard, I didn't I, I didn't talk about that yet, but I've I've included kind of like two two kind of like two I would say two templates for merger reports. One is rather short. I think I've already uploaded this last week, right? This is like very mm -hmm. very short one, just nine pages on kind of like um, mainly on strategy. 
um, not so much um, yeah a little bit on kind of like um, kind of like segments so this is something that could like inspire your merger report and yesterday I've also uploaded in like a little bit larger like a very like a textbook merger report with a lot of with a lot of more detail okay so this is something you but it's also similar what we've done right so what's the kind of like the share price reaction to the announcement date so that you can see here um, the an analysis of the target company in this case it, it was Puma yeah their sales mix by region by distribution channel their historical performance uh, also the acquiring company in this case it was uh, PPR now now called um, uh, Coiring right the French French uh, luxury article company uh, so a little bit on their history you don't have to do it in, in the detail it's just an inspiration for you what you could do okay so they it also includes sales by region sales by segment and uh, what you're referring to is um, okay how how could the, how could the company look together okay so what you could do is for example this is this year so um, looking at at uh, uh, at uh, PPR on a standalone basis in terms of their uh, sales segments uh, and the, their geographical split and then if you would combine it with Puma which is just much more um, I think much more uh, uh, represented in in the US or um, so how how would the sales mix change if you would combine those two firms right so how would be how would be uh, the gross margin be different so if Puma has a much higher kind of like gross margin uh, and we combine two firms how would the combined gross margin look like how would the sales by region would change if we combine these two companies so this is something what I mean by looking at potential consequences of a sales mix so that you kind of like if, if the management argues okay we, we are able to enter new markets that you kind of like can pre-assess it in the like in the numbers of the financial statements already whether this actually is true or not or whether this is only marginal right so here it seems like if if a PPR and Puma merge then for example the geographical split would not change a lot okay there's just a just a small shift, a little bit more sales in in the Americas, so, so North and South America region, uh, a, a little bit less on the European and Asian kind of like market, and um, but not too many changes, right? So 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 there it wouldn't make sense to argue uh, that uh, you know they're gonna enter new markets if they merge together. So in terms of geographic um, geography at least, right? Could be the different distribution channels could be could be could be used of course so this is kind of like what i mean by by you know co like combining the um, operations of the two companies hypo, hypo hypothetically um at least so that's your question okay 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 thanks a lot mm -hmm. right so you, um just going through this merger report a little bit so they <clears throat> so so here's a lot of on a lot on the strategy, on the segments, distribution channels, less so on the valuation. Um, there, there, there are there there is a little bit on the valuation um, in terms of I think multiples, multiples, so just historical statements. I think. Um, yeah okay there's a there's a projection calculation as well it's a little bit different that what i've shown to you i think it's more detailed you don't need it that detailed but it's also something that you look that you can look at um uh okay some better information tax rate i think there was uh yeah some some multiples also also um, pumas multiples compared to the competitors and um so um so you'll find an example for that here as well okay but you don't have to um just to make it clear you should not you don't have to like copy uh, this 25 page report or copy this uh, equity report and crispr cream much shorter it should just be an inspiration for what you could what you could discuss in your in your in your merger report and what you should discuss are the 10 points that i have outlined to you um on blackboard yeah okay so let's 
go back to I think our download should be ready so let's so let's check I think I've already open it open it yet I oh, know I have to click on it there so here's our download um, okay so let's open that one Okay, so here it is. Um, first of all, recommendation for me is just to take a filter. And then, for example, for my company, for Linde, um, they're also, they're not three companies listed, but uh, that's so, so there's the main company listed and then the two subsidiaries listed somewhere, at least with their, with their bonds or so. So we're gonna uh, eliminate those first. So we just stick with Linde. Um, the first important um, variable is the is the stat is the stat purse, okay, variable, which is uh, the IBIS statistical period variable, which just gives you information on when the consensus forecasts have been aggregated. Okay, so you can see they've aggregated one mid of April, one mid of May one mid of June, one mid of July. So it seems like, it, like every mid of the month, they are, they are, you know, this IBIS database combines all the analysts around that day, okay? Um, measure here, in this case, is earnings per share, right? So we can decide upon where we'd like to look at earnings per share, dividend per share, cash flow per share, book value per share, just focus on the earnings per share first. Um, this is the long-term growth, maybe we, um, we the uh, long-term growth as well we would like just to focus on on um, on the forecast on the forecast um, on the forecast uh, made in June um, so FP FPI one stands for is it the forecast for the next like for the end of the year FPA two would be for that would be the forecast for in two years three years, four years, and five years. Um, so this is the forecast until the kind of like the end of the year, 2016. I think I'm, I missed to download a variable. Let me switch to that. So I think the variable that I've not downloaded here, unfortunately, is the is this one here, the, the uh, FPE date. It's the financial reporting date. So here you can actually see what date is forecasted, right? So maybe we... We go back and do this again and add this um, important variable um, FP uh, forecast period end. Okay, this one forecast period end is what I forgot to download. So let me click on this um, again. Um, yeah, but you can see it also in the in like in the indicator. So if I look into kind of like two years in advance, I would I would I would see the matters. It's the median median uh, forecast. In terms of earnings per share, so in June, so in May 2016, they forecasted seven. Um, I think it's in dollars. Seven. No, it's in euros. So seven euros and fifty-four cents um, to be the um, you know the median analyst forecast of that particular month uh, for you know in one and a half years. So it's seven, and then seven five seven. The next month seven five five. So you see it changes, but not too much usually changes, um, but here it seems to be something happened uh, and then the median forecast jumped by one, um, jumped by one, um, one euro, right? So it could be something to do with maybe like a projection as a consequence of, um, of, of the potential merger uh, rumor or announcement, right? So in February, from February to March 2017, the projections have um, you know, change um, significant. Um, where is the running? Okay, so yeah, so we could, as I said, we could use earnings per share, or we could use the cash flow per share, um, as you can see here, um, to calculate your valuation uh, or the book value per share, and, and, and so you would need to just copy those numbers and put those numbers into you know, into such a valuation scheme to come up with a valuation then. 
Okay. Um, yeah, one more thing I would like to discuss, and it's the uh, financing. So as I already said, um, the merger report should include a discussion um, how the acquirer has paid for the acquisition. So did they issue stocks or, or warrants? Did they use cash or did they raise new debt? And um, there are some trade-offs between those alternatives. Um, if you think about it a little bit, so if you if you issue stocks, if you issue stocks um, to the target um, company's shareholders, then the target company's shareholders become the shareholders of your company. So, so in this case, um, you know, if you were, would have overpaid to them in terms of issuing your shares to them, then uh, they would. Yeah, they 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 are still participating in kind of like any price downturn as a consequence of that. So 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 in this regard, if you're issuing if you're issuing shares, then um, so you take those target shareholders into like into your boat. Um, it's not um, you know it's not that or it's at least less critical um, whether you've kind of like overpaid to them because you've overpaid to them in your own shares and then. Um, you know, if this was too if was, if this was too high, and the price go down. Um, you know, some of this um, price premium will evaporate. Um, in, 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 you know, um, conversely, if you would pay cash to them, any price premium is left with them. They walk, they walk off, and they and they and they keep the price premium. So, what the company does um, in, in terms of acquisition financing. Um, not only has capital structure effects, they're talked about like in a second, but but um, you know could be interpreted by the market differently, right? Um, yeah. So if you so if you use your own cash, this is rather received by market by the market to be more positive, okay? Then if you use um, issuing new shares as a, you know, um, to to finance the acquisition because here you you know you either take the target company shareholders into your boat or you think that your own stock is overvalued, so it's signaling like different things to the market, and this could be something 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 bad or negatively affect um, the consequences of your deal announcement. So this is something what you might what you might discuss. Um, besides that, yeah, as I said. Um, uh, the, the debt to equity ratio and for example interest coverage ratio could change as a consequence of the deal so it might be interesting to discuss okay by how much um, does it change and whether the risk of financial dis distress has increased okay um, so that debt to equity kind of like doubles as a consequence of the like of the deal then something worth about um, talking if, if you know if it's all equity finance then um, or that or, or that the equity ratio is reduced, then something may be positive to talk about. Um, yeah, there are yeah there are two things that you don't have to mention in your equity report, or, but just that you've heard about it. Um, sometimes there are tax effects from how you pay. So if you pay cash, usually uh, the target shareholders are taxed upon their gains. Um, but if you pay in shares, then the target shareholders are usually not taxed because they are just switching shares, and um, um, so they do not have, they do not need to pay taxes on that. Only when they kind of like cash cash out, they need to pay taxes. So there are some tax effects on the target shareholders. Um, however, if you issue shares, then usually this comes with transaction costs. So you need an investment bank to you know. Um, you know, again, to work on the issuance of the new share. So this comes with additional costs. If it's just just cash that you're using, you're just transferring the money, um, and uh, there's no significant additional uh, costs uh, associated with that. Um, yeah, yeah. So as I said, kind of like in your report, questions that you might address in terms of acquisition financing is again, what is leverage for the newly created firms? How does this compare to the leverage for comparable firms in the industry? What are the projected future cash flows for the merged company? Are these sufficient to meet the firm's debt commitments? So just looking at the kind of like the interest paid and then 
you know, there's, uh, if there's a lot of debt raised and the interest uh, that need to be paid goes up, you know, how does this compare to the operating cash flows that the company is generating? Um, so in general, how much cushion does a company have <coughs> for its for its future future debt obligations? Um, okay, sometimes sometimes um, acquisitions are subject to approval, or often they're subject to approval. On the one hand, by the by you know the target company's shareholders, uh, then by the target company's management. Um, or you know other potential acquirers could step in so there are a lot of uncertainties uh, uncertainties so a lot of unknowns when you when you when you start a bidding process um, um, that so it could be that, that in your particular M&A deal that the target management didn't want a takeover and so they they um, they engage into different strategies to um, in to, 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 to prevent the acquisition. So if this is happening, this is something to, uh, in, interesting to talk about in your merger report. Um, also very often as you know, companies are becoming bigger and bigger, um, there could be antitrust and securities issues, meaning that um, you know, big acquisitions, they need the approval from the Security and Exchange Commission in the United States, from the European Commission, for the European Union and also, um, you know, by the Chinese government sometimes, if, or the Japanese government, if it's kind of like the company is located in Japan or China. Um, so very often there are antitrust discussions. So, you know, does this merger create a company that will harm competitiveness in this particular industry? Um, so if this is the case, um, this might lead to delay in the, like in the merger and uh, maybe lose off uh, kind of like efficiencies. Um, if you find when you kind of like do research on the uh, particular deal, if you find that um, this is a, kind of like a big issue, then this is again something that would be interesting to see in your merger report. <coughs>